let's go to the actual equations. We're going to analyze the V-real equation. And V-real, why? Because it starts with V to the zero power, V to the first power, V to the second power, V to the third power, and you will continue infinity to the infinity. But of course, we're not going to do that because it will take a lot of time. This is the typical one. And yeah, you could calculate these values. Of course, the more values you add, the best prediction you get for either pressure, wave, uh, volume, or temperature. And the problem here is that you will have volume in the left side and in the right side. And you cannot, I would say, just like find V in an implicit, uh, like a, in an equation. You will have an equation that will be dependent of V everywhere. Let's go. A good thing to do this is to truncate the V real equation. What does that mean? We're going to ignore all the other values here and we're going to only take care about these values here. It's a simplification, of course. So, because it's simple, it's not that precise. Maybe we will be 98%, whereas before we will have, I don't know, depending on the number of variables, we could have a lot of precision. And we still have the problem that we have volume here and the volume here. And yes, the problem here is this B, which is not that problem, it's only a calculation set. The value of B is given by a set of equations. Let me show you. So remember, TR is temperature of the gas and the critical temperature and you need the PR which is the temp pressure of the gas plus the critical it's not actually like we are not adding this it's only the what do we need we will need the temperature of the gas pressure of the gas critical temperature of the gas and critical pressure of the gas and this little guy the Peter eccentric factor which essentially just say how spheric is our substance no. Don't worry, you don't need to understand what it is. You just need to know that you need it for the B calculation. This accepting the pizza eccentric factor is typically shown in thermodynamics and equilibrium thermodynamics. So don't worry. Right now you just need to know it exists and you can use it to get the value of B, which will be then used in the calculation of the virial equation, which is here. Another note I want to tell you is like it's more or less it's kinda like the ideal gas. If you ignore this, you got almost the ideal one. PV equals RT. This is ideal. So this is you can see it as a correction of the ideal gas. Anyways, let's continue. We had this equation here. P0, don't ask me where do they get them, just make a leap of faith and trust me. You will need this, especially TR here, and TR here, and PC here, TC here. So once you calculate B0, actually you just need temperature, radius of temperature, and B1, you just substitute this here and find the eccentric factor depending on the substance. That's why it's good because you have like a characterization of the substance. Now we are actually caring about the substance, not only we say oh R is for every gas. No. We're going to use this characterization of the substance plus the reduced temperature. If you don't know, but the critical temperature is also like a fingerprint of a substance. So that's why it's a lot way better to characterize our gas in the equation. So once we got B, we insert B here, and we simple, simply calculate for the value we, we need. The only problem I tell you guys is for volume. You will probably have to iterate, which is a process, not that nice, but it's something like value of... You propose a value of B, let's say you take out here, you get this value, 1 plus B divided by B, RT. 
So the thing here is you propose a value, I don't know, one, and you will get, sorry, be here, not this here. I say one, and then you get this value here. And say, I don't know, five. And now you use this five, and it will correct, I don't know, 3.5. And then you use this 3.5 here, and then you get, I don't know, 3.8. And now you're, now you're getting near 3.8, and you get 3.88. At this time, I will say that it's okay. But this is more numerical methods. We're not going to watch that right now. But just wanted to t let you know that it could theoretically be solved by numerical, numerical methods. And here's an example. 2 gram moles of nitrogen is placed in a 3 liter tank, that's volume, at this temperature, negative. They tell you, please estimate the tank pressure with ideal gas and with the virial equation of course truncated and what else okay supposing that the second one is correct please calculate the percentage error here okay so it is easy three things pressure as ideal gas pressure as real gas and no, real gas sorry and calculate the error so the first one is easy PV equals NRT we just solve for P and we have this right here we have N R, we can find it here, the typical R we use, are 8.314 T, we just change it to Kelvin, which is 122 and the volume, which is 3 liters, we change it to cubic meters and we substitute everywhere. Substituting the data, you already know how to do it, we got this or in kilopascals here. So, they give us this, well actually they don't give it to us, but we find this from the book the Pitzer factor, or eccentric factor, and the critical temperature and pressure of nitrogen. So that's good. Now, for the truncated equation, we need to calculate B0, then calculate B1, then calculate B, and after that we need to find P from the truncated equation. So, let's do it. B0, B1, and then B, and then we calculate pressure. So we have this, this is a truncated equation. We're going to solve for P, which is very nice because we can actually have one variable equation. We got this and this factor is this one. This stays the same. And of course, the only thing we have left to do is find B. So B is equal to this times this. So from here we need to find TC, which already have it as data, PC we have it as data, and the eccentric factor we have it already as data. B0, for the other hand, we have this equation, which only asks us TR. We just need to know TR, which is simple, which is T divided by TC. And B1, same story, TR. Of course there are different numbers. So let's calculate TR, which Normal temperature divided by the critical temperature, it's 122 divided by 126, almost 1. The critical pressure, we, we don't need the reduced one, so we just change it to kilopascal, which will be 33.9 kilopascals. Now, let's substitute all the data before in the equations, which will be only here and here. We check all this number here, make sure to elevate these powers and you will get these two negative numbers. Now, 4 and 5 put put them in the equation of, of B, which let me tell you it is this one. Put the data here and eventually just solve, substitute, be careful with the units and the eccentric factor is here. Solve and you will get this number here. B which we will say it's number 7. Let's substitute number 7 in 8. We have everything, R we have it, T we have it. This we do not have, it, but we can calculate it. And this is the same. And B is just a number, actually it's equation 7. The volume, I check it very fast, 
we know three liters per two gram mole. So let's change it to cubic meters and gram mole. Now we substitute in this equation before. So we have R, which is here. We have T, which is here, and we have V, which is this one. And we got this one, which is here, V, which is here, and this volume right here. So let's do some math and you get this value, which is a little bit less from the other one. Now they ask us to compare. So supposing the second one is the good one, oh, sorry, this is backwards. Supposing the virial equation result, the pressure of uh, calculated is real, then we are going to check the error. This is real, real, and this is the outlier, or the ideal one. Doing this calculation, you will get an 8.2% of error, which is, depending on the application, you will say it's engineeringly zero, or it could be also deadly, unsafe, not recommended, etc. So that depends a lot of the application, the type of materials, safety issues, etc. We are just limited to say that we fail by 8% with the ideal equation. And yeah, let's continue with the other equations. This course limits only to general knowledge of the equations because these equations are seen in the thermodynamics course. Hopefully I have time and I upload this really really fast if you need them, but theoretically you are not supposed to watch this. I think if you know them or understand them, it's okay. If you do need it, you can check a lot of internet. Actually, if you speak Spanish, you can check my channel in Spanish. And let me put the channel here, Cam and IQA. That's the Spanish one. I have many subjects about thermodynamics, but the thing is that it's in Spanish. But come on, numbers are numbers everywhere, so if I'd say something in Spanish but 7 is at 7 and multiplying 3 times 7 is 21 everywhere in the world. So I'm going to try to upload this thermodynamic course to my webpage and probably I'll show you where can you get these 3 or 4 equations. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.